I'm King Lincoln, let's talk about the Yakuza franchise once again, particularly the Kiryu games, which I lovingly call the Kiryu Saga. Though, I'd like to explain the concept of this series quickly. The quick backstory is after finishing both Yakuza 3 and 4, I really wanted to make a video on it, but I hadn't finished the entire series. There was a lot to talk about at that point, such as the Tojo's clan place in the series or Kamurocho's evolution throughout the games, but I couldn't talk about the entire franchise as one. I also often get questions about where to start the series on any of my Yakuza videos, so I figured that would be a good topic. I realized the best thing to do would be one video about the entire Yakuza franchise all at once, which is what this video is trying to be. I am limiting it to the Kiryu Saga, the games with Kiryu Kazuma as a main character, really to keep the scope focused, but this is still a video that's going to be covering seven games, and I'll cover them as best I can. If you're worried about spoilers, don't be. I'm going to be breaking this video into three sections. I call it the beginner, intermediate, and expert sections. The idea being the beginner section will be for players who've never played any of these games before. The intermediate section will be for players who've played some of the games. There'll be tiny spoilers for the entire franchise, essentially review level. And then the expert section will be at the end. It'll be for players who've seen everything, and that's going to be just a spoiler discussion of interesting parts of the franchise. I'll even post the timestamps if people want to jump ahead. This week, though, we're primarily focusing on Yakuza 0 through 6, including the Kiwamis, as these are the games where at least one of the main characters is Kiryu Kazuma, who's an amazing character and one of the reasons you really should be checking out this series. Speaking of which, let's get to the beginner questions. It doesn't really matter what series I talk about, there's always two important questions that people have. Why should I play the series, and where should I start? Let's start with that big one. Why should you check out Yakuza? Now, Yakuza is a fantastic series that has been running for over 15 years now. It's a story about a Yakuza member named Kiryu Kazuma, who ends up going to jail for a murder he didn't commit. He then is expelled from the Yakuza organization, and consistently finds ways to be pulled back into Yakuza drama in every game, even if he starts each game as a civilian. This might sound weird to Americans where we have mafia movies and gangster films where we kind of glorify criminal life, but the Japanese Yakuza is different, as are the Japanese citizens' views on it. Truthfully, I'm not the person who can speak to that. Just realize that the distance in the Yakuza series with Kiryu starting as a citizen in each game is important culturally. What I can discuss is how these games feel like a third-person open-world beat-em-up at times, as well as having a great combat system where Kiryu takes on large groups of enemies with flashy moves. Each game has a fresh system, and there's a feeling of progression in the series as players move between the games. What keeps me coming back to the Yakuza franchise is the story. The studio who made it, Yu Ga Gotaku. I I'm just going to call him RGG from now on because I'm sure I'm butchering that as well as other things here. Anyways, RGG can really make the player care about the typical Yakuza stories and bring a lot of heart and character into each entry with serious and impactful main stories. There's also excellent side stories, which are short vignettes which players will stumble upon, be taken on a mini-adventure, potentially watch scenes play out, which are usually hilarious but also really well delivered. There's at least 50 of these sub-stories per game, sometimes as much as 100, and they're all worth hunting for. And then there's the mini-games. Each Yakuza game is an open-world game, and players will find tons of mini-games to challenge them, whether it be old Sega arcade games like OutRun, or entire mini-games such as running a cabaret club. Everything in Yakuza is stylish as well. Even answering a phone has a whole new meaning when done at a telephone club, and this is a style that consistently pervades the entire franchise. There's just a ton to discover in Yakuza, and if you want a meaty game, I actually averaged over 50 hours per title. For the entire series, I've spent over 450 hours just on these Kiryu Saga games, and I've yet to platinum a single one of these titles, so there's always going to be more to find and do. Now I'm sure I've whet the appetite of some of you, so I'm sure you want to dive into the series, but before we talk about where to start, I want to talk about Kiwami. What is up with the name Yakuza Kiwami? Yakuza Kiwami roughly translates to Yakuza Extreme. Yakuza Kiwami and Yakuza Kiwami 2 are just remakes of the original Yakuza and Yakuza 2 titles that were released on the PS2. They were pretty rough looking by the time the PS4 arrived and thus were remade for the PS4 with new features and the new ascension. So the big question is, where should you start the series? Let's remove the limitations of just the Kiryu Saga and talk about the entire franchise. There's really four obvious starting points. 
Yakuza Kiwami is a remake of the original game in the series, that's the obvious choice, but not what I'd recommend. Yakuza 0 is the prequel to Yakuza Kiwami, it's the earliest game in the story. Then there's Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is the first mainline Yakuza game without Kiryu, starring Ichiban Kasuga. And then there's an offshoot called Judgment, which is yet to reach Steam, but it's about an unrelated lawyer. Every other title in the series has links to previous titles, or feels like the player should have developed some relationship with the characters before that point, so out of the four titles I've mentioned, which one do I recommend starting with? Yakuza Like a Dragon is probably the worst starting point, unless players only want to play a Japanese RPG. It's the only game in the series as I make this video with a full turn-based battle system. The downside is the story there heavily links to earlier titles, so I don't really recommend starting with Like a Dragon unless players plan to never play the Kiryu Saga, which I think would be a mistake. I haven't played Judgment, but it is a perfect choice and can be played at any time as it's unrelated to the main series. At least that's my understanding of it so far. I'd love to know more, but it's not on Steam and Sega, you know how to fix that. Judgment, PC, come on, just do it! So it's down to Yakuza Kiwami and Yakuza 0. Now I find Yakuza Kiwami's story to be a little bit weak due to the original Yakuza story being... Uh, you know, rough. Half the story doesn't really involve the Yakuza and instead focuses on a little girl that Kiryu adopts. She is a major part of the series, but that doesn't make Yakuza Kiwami's story great. The bigger issue, though, is Yakuza 0 helps fill in important blanks in Yakuza Kiwami that, without experiencing it, makes at least two specific characters in Yakuza Kiwami far weaker than they should be. I'm not going to be saying who they are, but one is an early boss and one is critical to the story. Also, Yakuza 0 gives you the perfect introduction to Majin Magoro, who all I'm going to say is one of most fans' favorite characters in the entire series. Yakuza Kiwami also heavily features Majima in a Majima Everywhere system, and if that's your first game, I think that system would feel out of place, and since it's a major part of leveling up, you're going to have to interact with it. Though, new players might not understand why Majima is getting so much screen time. Honestly, it's because he's awesome. So, if you're new to the series, I'd say pick up Yakuza 0 and see how you like it. I'll also say it's one of the best in the series, so if you hate Yakuza 0, the entire series might not be for you. And that's what I have for the beginner questions. So, having answered the common questions, I think it's time to move on to the intermediate section and dig a little deeper into these games. In this section, I'm going to be a little more open with spoilers. Nothing major, but I do want the ability to point out reasons why each game is worth playing. Think of these as short reviews, similar to what I do in Humble Bundle. For the intermediate section, I think there are a couple of common questions. Which games can or should I skip in a series, and what is each game like? So let's start with which games you might want to or can safely skip. And the answer here is pretty easy. It's simply none, or at least you shouldn't. Yakuza 0 is a prequel, so it would be easy to remove it from the series if someone really wanted to, but as mentioned before, it's the best starting point for the series, and also one of the best titles. Yakuza Kiwami sets up a large number of major players for the series, but from that point, each game builds on the previous title. Even Yakuza 3, which is the lowest point for the franchise, discusses multiple fundamental character arcs and motivations where the rest of the games build upon it. There's no reason to skip that one, even if it is the weakest game. So once you've started the series, just keep playing through the games in order and push through Yakuza 3 if you must, because yeah, that one's really rough. Which is the beginning of the next section, where we talk about what each game is like. And I think the easiest thing to do is build a tier list here with each title getting a mini review. So we'll quickly talk about each game for a minute or two and score them. Since I'm going to recommend every game here, even putting all of them in must play because they're in order, this time I'm going to be going with a simple rating system using standard grading. Our scale is going to be at the upper end of the charts, we'll score them from 10 out of 10 to 6 out of 10, not because of the limitations, but because they all fit in that range. Going in order, we'll start with Yakuza 0, and this is a great entry that will prepare players for everything this series has to offer. It's a relatively modern engine based on the original Dragon Engine, which was developed after Yakuza 5. It includes two playable protagonists, both Kiryu and Majima Goro, who as mentioned will become a major part of the series. Yakuza 0 will introduce players to both of these amazing characters and the series as a whole. There's also extremely good bosses, especially Kuze, who is one of my favorite bosses of the entire series. Even this fight at the end of the first chapter is a fantastic fight. 
Both playable characters get three different fighting styles, each of which will be useful for different types of battles. There's also multiple mini games, but the two biggest ones here are the Real Estate mini game and the Cabaret Club. Both are excellent and worth playing through entirely. The story in Yakuza 0 revolves around a mysterious empty lot. This is an epic tale that has a lot of twists and turns as well as an emotional story. Try to go into this game as fresh as you can because this is a hell of a ride. I originally gave this game a 4.5 out of 5, essentially a 9 out of 10, but that was due to technical issues as well as crashes. Also the fact that there was no autosave kind of hurt the game due to the crashes. Ultimately that kind of sucked. Those issues though appear to be resolved, so I have no problem giving this game a perfect score now. It's just such an enjoyable trip. I enjoyed both character stories. Now there is a small problem with this game. It's a bit of a spoiler. Let me try to explain. Basically fans wanted to know a couple of important things and those pieces aren't actually in this game. But otherwise, this is a fantastic journey well worth playing. Then there's Yakuza Kiwami. Now, I fully understand Yakuza 1 was the title that created the series. That was the game that started the story and developed the feeling of the franchise. I'd also point out that this is a remake, so this is Yakuza 1 as RGG wanted it to be. And honestly, it's still quite rough. There are two big issues I have with Yakuza Kiwami. Now, the boss battles are extremely unsatisfying with a mechanic where you have to pull off a heat move to avoid the bosses recovering energy as part of the fight, as well as having to be in the right stance to use that heat move. You know, it's just an annoying system that wasn't necessary. The other issue is the story. I mentioned earlier how the story really doesn't focus on Yakuza, and understandable, the Japanese name is not actually Yakuza, but that's also because of Haruka, a kid Kiryu takes care of. I like Haruka after finishing the entire series. I kind of still don't like the story in Yakuza Kiwami, even if they've redeemed that character later. It's just slow and boring when the parts of the story revolving around everything else are what players are going to be excited to see. The fact is, Yakuza Kiwami is a bit of a weak game. For me, this game earns an 8. I think it's on the border of being a 7 even, especially when looking at the entire franchise, there's so many better games. But I also have to say the remake has made this more enjoyable, and the Majima Everywhere system is so over the top. You know, it's hilarious, especially Garomi. RGG understood what I really wanted. And that brings us to Yakuza Kiwami 2. Now, while the first two games were from the original version of the Dragon Engine, Kiwami 2 is actually based on the Yakuza 6 version of the updated Dragon Engine, and honestly, this is a remarkable improvement. It's the last game of the Kiryu Saga to be released, hopefully not the last ever, maybe Yakuza Kiwami 3, uh, but it looks incredible. Yakuza Kiwami 2's strongest part is the story, where it has a new, incredibly involved tale, but also produces one of the best final bosses, a guy who just keeps appearing in the story and actually makes the player want to have that epic showdown, and Kiwami 2 actually delivers on it fully. The engine is fantastic, and this is the best of the best for everything because it's the latest game. The mini games, especially, are amazing, they all feel refined, the experience system is the best that it has been out of all the games, and the combat feels extremely good. I give Yakuza Kiwami 2 another perfect score. I love Yakuza 0, but I think Yakuza Kiwami 2 is even better. It's just a very solid game, and it's what I wish the rest of the series could live up to. Sadly, that's not what happened. It's time to talk about Yakuza 3. <sighs> so obviously, I'm not a fan of Yakuza 3, and Yakuza 3 is a strange one because there are very few people who love Yakuza 3, but there's also a lot of different reasons why people seem to hate Yakuza 3. Personally, for me, it's the battle system. Yakuza 3 was a chore to play through, and a lot of it was the combat in Yakuza 3 was just not enjoyable. The big thing is that bosses seem to block almost every attack, and even when you start a combo, they might block the second attack most of the time, even when you're on normal. They also have huge health bars, and just are not very enjoyable fights. And it's a shame, because the boss fights are what you look forward to in this series, giving kind of a cathartic fight at the end of a chapter. On the other hand, Yakuza 3's story is interesting. It's focused on the life after leaving the Yakuza, looking at former members of the crime organization, as well as the troubles that are presented to those who leave that life of crime behind. The problem is, there's a lot of pacing issues and a few plot holes, as well as an overly complicated story. Now, the one part that I think worked the best, but is a bit divisive, was the orphanage that we see at the beginning of the game. I love to see Kiryu working with these young kids, and the player can feel like Kiryu is finally free from his past. 
you know, until the past shows up a few minutes later. But the orphanage here is a major part of the story, and it's a good one if only I could enjoy the gameplay. I give Yakuza 3 a 6 out of 10. Now normally I wouldn't recommend a game that rated that low, but since this is a major turning point in the franchise's stories, it's still worth playing, but I highly recommend players try playing on easy just to minimize the battle system as much as possible. And then there's Yakuza 4, which is another major turning point for the series. Rather than another Kiryu Kazuma solo adventure, Yakuza 4 actually brings in three new playable characters. Of course, I'm talking about in the Kiryu saga because that fourth playable character is Kiryu himself. Yakuza 4 has Mashiyoshi Tanimura, a police officer, Shun Akiyama, a loan shark, and Taiga Saijima, a beast of a man. And all four of these characters have different fighting styles and their own stories, which makes this game feel like there's almost four titles tied together. This is a pretty big change for the franchise, but it's a good one, as each character feels unique and each character has their own major story arc. Now the finale of the game it's a touch weak, and there's at least one big reveal that's beyond stupid, but overall, it's a great title. There's also a section at the beginning of Saitama's story that is a little bit rough because there's no time to really learn his fighting style before the major fights in his chapter, but on the scale of the game, it's a rather minor complaint. If there's one problem with Yakuza 4 though, with all these new characters, it feels like this could have been a spin-off title without Kiryu. I know that's a strange criticism, but realize that 75% of this game is new characters you won't be familiar with, and it'd be easy to remove or replace Kiryu's section and make a game like Judgment, which serves as a standalone title. Now I still gave Yakuza 4 an 8 out of 10 when I reviewed it, and you know what? I think when thinking about the entire franchise, I'm going to be bumping this up to 9 out of 10, especially after seeing everything else. Yakuza 4 is something different, and they actually took a big risk on it, but it also paid off and gave players more characters and a different story than what Kiryu's view could tell alone. Yakuza 5 takes it a little further. Instead of 4 characters, there's now 5, and Tanimura is gone, potentially due to some allegations against the actor who was portraying him, I believe those were proven false though, but in his place there's Tatsuo Shineda, an ex-baseball player trying to uncover what got him kicked out of baseball, and Haruka is playable for the first time ever, in an attempt to be a Japanese teen idol, which is actually one of the craziest things I've seen in a Yakuza game, and that's saying something in the series, as I've seen Kiryu go to an adult chat room and type, boo. I like a lot of what Yakuza 5 does, but the biggest thing about Yakuza 5 is there's just too much of it. This is easily a 60 hour game for the main story unless you rush. There's so many side activities, so many storylines and characters and sub stories and more. Completionists will be overwhelmed, but even normal players will be stuffed after this entry. There's also five cities, three of which are brand new to the series, so there's tons of new locations to experience. The one downside is, a lot of this feels like a buffet. Haruka's song sections repeat the same gameplay and songs quite often. Most of the side activities could use a lot more polish, and for as long as this game is, each character probably needed a lot more attention. I still like Yakuza 5, and there's a part of me that just wonders if Haruka's idol adventure would be better in a standalone title, and if Shineda's baseball minigame could have been deeper, or Saijima's hunting minigame. You know, all of this just feels a little bit too easy and too short. Ultimately though, I enjoyed Yakuza 5 for what it was, but there's still, you know, maybe too much in Yakuza 5 spread too thin. It's a shame, but it's still a good journey. I still rate it an 8 out of 10 because the quantity is high even if the quality slips just a bit. And finally we have Yakuza 6. Now I was excited when I got to this title because it was the end for me. I had already played Yakuza Like a Dragon, the sequel to it, and this is the culmination of the entire saga. There were six previous titles, and Yakuza 6 was kind of set up to be the final title starring Kiryu. The issue with Yakuza 6 is one that this game really doesn't live up to the idea that this is a finale, but it also ignores those previous six titles. Rather than talking about the Tojo clan that Kiryu has constantly been involved in, the main subject of this game is a different group in a different city, and in that way, it feels like Kiryu forces his way into the story. Also, giving Kiryu a young child for the first third of the game, which then kind of disappears as part of the story, wasn't a great choice, as well as this build up to some massive event that, when it actually is revealed, never feels kind of as epic as the game wanted it to be. I felt like I was questioning if that was the real surprise. With it being the end of the Kiryu saga though, there's a lot of missing pieces as well. Well, the new engine is beautiful, it's the same engine as Yakuza Kwame 2, 
I'd easily trade it for the old engine if I actually got to see more of Majima or Daigo Dojima showing up. Both of these are characters who have been in almost every title, and instead we get a different story as what appears to be Kiryu's final title. It's a little sad there's a lack of closure here. I ultimately gave Yakuza 6 a 7 out of 10, mostly because it's frustrating and a disappointing end to the series. But also, there's actually a really good story in Yakuza Like a Dragon that would have been a better story to tell in Yakuza 6. Just in that, it's a far more fitting and appropriate tale. I don't think this is the story that should have been the ending of Kiryu's story, but more importantly, I don't even know if this should be a Kiryu story, because it really doesn't fit in with the rest of the series, and that's a major shame. As a small bonus, so we don't end on a weaker title, I'll rate Yakuza Like a Dragon. Now, I won't give it a full review. Maybe next Yakuza video, you know, if they release more games, maybe I'll have to update this video or addendum. But I'm going to give Yakuza Like a Dragon a 9 out of 10. I played it the longest with over 100 hours invested. And while the battle system is different, it's still the same Yakuza silliness. Solid story, lots of fun activities, and the big issue is that there's a bit of grind right at the end which appears out of nowhere. So you shouldn't stop playing at the end of the Kiryu Saga, just keep playing this series. And that's what I have for the short reviews of each game. There are probably a few more things I want to say about them, but to say them, I'm going to have to move to the final section, the expert section. And this is your final spoiler warning. I'm going to be talking freely. I'm not going to be spoiling things without a major purpose. And I don't think they'll be very spoilerific. But I want to talk about the final bosses of the game or interesting story elements. So if you haven't finished the games and you want to without spoilers, now is a good time to stop. If you've enjoyed this video though, please consider subscribing or giving me a like on this video. Please return when you finish the series. I'd love to finish this discussion. And please, let me know when you want to see more videos like this or what franchises I should cover. I'm really interested in doing more of them. With everyone else, let's start talking about Yakuza freely. And the first thing I want to bring up is that Yakuza feels like there's two major hidden parts to the franchise. This is actually what I wanted to talk about after Yakuza 3 and 4. Yakuza is about Kiryu and so many other people, of course, but at the heart of the game, there's the Tojo clan. The Tojo clan has been the foundation for every game, even while I'm calling out Yakuza 6 for focusing elsewhere, a big piece of that story still has the Tojo clan at its core, even if it has no one fans would recognize or really care about. The level of successions, the characters, the major moments, even the Tojo clan's relationship with the Omi Alliance are all major pieces of this franchise, and it's actually going to be rather strange if future Yakuza games are no longer about this clan. They're kind of the hidden character in the franchise because they can be reduced to just their power structure for most of the games, and yet that power structure defines the rules of this hidden underworld of the game. I will say I wish Daigo could have been a more consistent character in some of the later titles, but there's a comfortable feeling when the Tojo clan appears and Kiryu gets pulled back into all that drama. Now the other major hidden character for me is Kamurocho itself. This city has been in every game so far, but what's interesting with Kamurocho is how they reused, redesigned, and evolved the city. Each game has given this city a makeover, but also added to it. Seeing the city expand into Kamurocho Hills, adding the underground shopping plaza in 4, or seeing it in the all new Dragon Engine is just incredible. And there's something interesting and welcoming about the people, locations, and more that have kept me interested in coming back again and again and seeing what changes. Most other games or franchises won't reuse the same map more than twice, and even the number of games that reuse a city more than once is incredibly small. But seeing that Yakuza has reused Kamurocho for every game in its franchise so far is incredible, and yet every time it feels both new and comfortable, which is actually an amazing mix. So both the Tojo clan's part of the franchise as this set of rules, and the Kamurocho is impressive, and I love that the series has produced both of them. Even knowing that Kamurocho is based on Kabuchio, I think that's the name, makes me want to go see it for real. On the other hand, I think we should mention that the final bosses in Yakuza are consistently weak. Except for Yakuza Kiwami and Yakuza Kiwami 2, players really don't enter the final boss fight with a hatred of that final boss. Ryuji is just a fantastic boss fight in Kiwami 2, and just an incredible battle that had me excited to finally fight and finally have that big showdown like I mentioned. He's also one of the most complex final bosses, but that's mostly because he has character development rather than appearing at the last minute. 
Without rattling them off, each of the main final bosses in the series feel like they come out of the woodwork, which is probably part of the Yakuza style of movies potentially, but they're not even toyed with until they step out from behind that curtain. The exception of course is Nishikiyama in Kiwami, but as great as that fight was, I actually think Yakuza 0 does a far better job of setting that battle up, making players feel the true betrayal than Kiwami does on its own. I still understand the limitations of the PS2, but Kiwami's story could have been done better. And the other character I was saying was done better in Yakuza 0 was Shimono, I uh, probably butchered that too. Finally, let's quickly talk about Kiryu Kazuma and his arc. Now, I love that Kiryu is the type of guy who will consistently come back to help out the Tojo clans or just his friends every time, and that's part of the reason why he's so lovable. In Yakuza 3, there's a great thread of Kiryu trying to find a life after the Yakuza, and it's something I wish this series spent, you know, just a little more time focusing on. I also find it funny that Kiryu accepts the role of chairman only to resign a day later as if he fulfilled the request in the goofiest way possible, yet everyone treats him with the massive levels of respect as the fourth chairman after doing that, you know, the dragon of Dojima. But the thing about Kiryu is he's just too nice. The joke about Kiryu never killing anyone has been done of course, but the thing is Kiryu is just such a swell guy, he could never do anything wrong. Even seeing him as an actual Yakuza would feel wrong. He's just a helpful friend, which actually works well because when Kiryu gets really angry, it feels like this major moment every single time. But even the creator doesn't want to see Kiryu beating up women, and I'll roll my eyes at that, but okay. So it would be cool to see him in Tekken. The only real problem is so many other Yakuza's in the later games seem to be trying to be super nice. And again, I can't speak to actual Yakuza or the Japanese citizens opinions of them, but I'm going to assume that they do get into criminal activities and probably aren't the type of people you want to hang out with as an outsider, which is a big part of the social stigma against them. Yet in Yakuza, there's just so many nice guy Yakuza's in this game. I mean, come on. It's just one thing when Kiryu's the super swell guy. I mean, come on guys, let's not throw rocks at people. But once every Yakuza seems to want to avoid doing crime, it kind of hurts Kiryu's characterizations as the one guy who seems to care more than others. As for Kiryu's arc, I do think quite a bit about Daigo Dojima, who, as I said, is one of the most inconsistent characters in the series, but I love in Yakuza 3, he talks about trying to give Kiryu peace with the orphanage. I love that part of the story because it shows the level of respect he has for Kiryu without directly saying it. It kind of gives me hope that Kiryu might be happy and live peacefully one day. The problem is, Yakuza 3, 5, and 6 all end in the same way. We're in the spoiler section, so I'm just going to say it. Kiryu dies before the credits of each of these games, but as a further spoiler, he somehow manages to reappear perfectly fine after the credits, except kind of for a 5. By the time they pulled this stunt in Yakuza 6, did anyone actually expect him to die? Of course not. Now that being said, following Kiryu's story, even with him being just such a swell guy to help everyone out, has been enjoyable. I don't know many people who would spend 450 hours doing something they didn't enjoy. I loved my time with Yakuza, and I'm going to be honest, I'm considering going back to Yakuza 0 to replay it and see everything that I missed the first time around. But before we end, I do have one parting thought. Yakuza's franchise has a lot of stories, and they all are overly complex and intricate stories with multiple reveals and surprises and twists. You know, I think another franchise does something similar with its storytelling. Metal Gear Solid. I think Kojima's style of storytelling and RGG's are kind of similar in an odd form of complexity. I do believe that Metal Gear tries to be much more of a complex movie story, where Yakuza tries to be a video game story if that makes sense, but both franchises are needlessly complex and yet are beloved for their outlandish takes. But you know, no matter what I've said, you know, no matter what I think, Rubber Bullets are still the worst plot twist in the entire series. That's what I have for the Yakuza series for now. I honestly do plan on returning and updating, doing an addendum of some sort after a few more games in the series have been released on PC, but that's probably in the distant future, hopefully not too long though. This video has taken a lot longer than I expected, but it's something new and it's something I want to try to do more of. I'm trying to find a consistent video format for my channel and hopefully this will be it. I'm hoping smaller franchises might be a little quicker, maybe I'll split a larger franchise up, you know. Seven games was entirely too much for this video. This video has actually taken me far longer than any other video and probably has a runtime that eclipses other videos as well, but I wanted to take that extra effort because this is the series that deserves it. This is one of my favorites of all time. 
I'm going to be trying to schedule these videos a little more, do these at the second week after Humble so it doesn't feel like nothing gets published for a month and then I release two videos back to back. So please reach out and let me know what you think of this format. If you can think of a better name than beginner, intermediate, and expert, you know, I'd love to hear it. I've tried stuff like noob and completionist. It doesn't really work. Now, if you have any questions that should be asked and answered about either just the Yakuza franchise or any franchise moving forward, let me know down below. I'll try to answer them as best I can or include them in future videos. I do have a list of franchises, both big and small, that I'm probably going to be tackling. But if there are any franchises you want me to cover with this format, you know, my suggestion box is open. I'll see what I can do. Obviously, a big piece of this is also how long each game takes. But I'm also kind of planning on doing most of Final Fantasy and the Assassin's Creed franchise. So obviously I'm insane, but I think I'm going to be doing Ding and Rampa next. So that's going to be a quick one. And I'll probably split up those bigger franchises into at least two, if not three videos. And if everything I've put into this video has paid off and you've liked what you've seen, please consider subscribing. Now, I don't put advertisements on these videos. This was something that was just, like I said, a complete labor of love for one of my favorite series, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope we've been able to share this time. If you know someone who would enjoy the Yakuza series as well, please share this video with them. The whole point is that anyone should be able to watch this and hopefully get something out of it. I'll be popping up an old video on Yakuza 0 through Kiwami, which you now know all about, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which you can find out more there. Check that video out if you want to know more. And until then, I'm King Link, and thank you very much for watching.